Carla Marie Williams is an author of multiple books. She's a speaker and an advocate for children and families. And I happen to have found her because she commented on a post that I had on Facebook. She's a 15-year veteran of homeschooling six kids, and she's become a coach to thousands of parents through social media and mentorship programs using her own curriculum. And she joins me today for a conversation about home education, particularly as it relates to unschooling. This is the Heidi St. John Podcast. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. So, Carla, welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for having me. So, I have an interesting story about how I found Carla. So, you know, guests come to me from, you know, all around the world. I just had Riley Gaines on the show. We we're talking about the transgender movement. You guys know me. Everything is interesting to me. Like, I like talking about politics. I want to talk about the church. I want to talk about education. And I found you because you left a comment on my Facebook page, which is kind of amusing because I'm not on my Facebook page very much <laughs> anymore. It's it's less appealing to me in my 50s than it was in my 30s. I'll just put, it that, just put it that way. I'm not enjoying it very much. But I was so intrigued. I went and sort of uh, looked you up a little bit, a little, little cyber stalking, you trying to figure <laughs> out, you know, who you were and sort of what your jam was. And you have been unschooling. So you're a homeschool mom, mm-hmm. right? Of six. So tell us a little bit about you, your journey, your family. Uh, and uh, then I want to, I really want to dive into this topic of unschooling. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Wow. Where do I begin? Um, I'd say back in 2007, Um, After adopting our first three children, um, I decided that I wanted to stay home with them. And I had planned on homeschooling from the very beginning and I chickened out and we (laughs) happened to have, I I didn't, I didn't know anyone that did it. Girl, I, I relate. I wasn't supported by anyone around me. I was, I was in the church. I was a minister in the church. Um, but all the women around me were working moms climbing corporate ladders. And so it was, you know, what am I going to have to talk about at dinner with my friends? I mean, I was really trying. Am I even going to have any friends after this? Yeah. 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 I got you. (laughs) Right. Because they feel judged when you make an odd decision. Isn't that true? It's so true. Yeah, it is. (laughs) So true. And so, what what happened was I chickened out at the last minute and we were across the street where we lived at the time from the best elementary school in our city. So I'm like, why would I do this myself when all I have to do is just a walker across the street? Right. So right. I did that. And it's free. Right. right. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and through, you know, I had, yeah, two kids home, you know, two little ones at home and she was starting and I, we did that three years and three schools later. It was like, I can't do this anymore. She needed Mm. one-on-one. Again, uh, we had adopted. She was three at the time. And her brother was two. And and then I had the baby. They were all siblings. And so it was like, she needs something different that a public school cannot offer. No matter what school we sent her to, she was going to need something different. And so in the beginning, it was just an emergency. Save my daughter mission, right? Um, And so that was the goal. And then uh, eventually it just became a family thing where we did it with all three of the kids. And then seven years later, um, even though we were doing it for three and a half, four years, I hated it. Mm -hmm. My kids did not like it. My husband was tired of hearing me complain and crying in the corner when he got home because I was. I'm going to stop you for a second because. You just said something out loud that a lot of a lot of moms won't say out loud. And I've been saying it out loud for a long time. So whenever I hear a, a fellow truth teller, I'm like, whoa, stop, <laughs> say it again. Your husband, right. hu- listen, women, lean in. Homeschool mom. Actually, you don't even have to be a homeschool mom. Just lean in, women. Your husbands don't <laughs> like it when you're constantly complaining. They really oh. don't like it. There's nothing more, uh, my husband used to tell me, sort of demoralizing than to come home and have me just like, Nothing went good today. Everything's difficult. Right. You know, I hate <laughs> and this. And they're fixers. Yes. And so then he wants to fix it. And he's like, what can I do? And right. I'm like, there's nothing. This is just our life now. <laughs> right. It's very Eeyore-ish. Right. And pretty soon. <laughs> Absolutely. They're just like, I mean, how many dads have I talked to over the years who've said, I don't want my wife homeschooling anymore because she's miserable. I, she's miserable right. to live with. I don't like my homeschool wife. Right. Oh, right. man. His answer, his answer at the time was send them back. And I was like, yes. that's not happening. So yes. I have to figure this out and shut my mouth. Yes. And that's exactly Girl, what I did. Yes. Come on. <laughs> and Come so on. Um, 
we abandoned our carefully crafted, beautiful uh, <laughs> basement classroom that had all the bells and whistles of a, you know, elementary classroom. The, the American flag is there and the desks yes. and the apple. The letters and the on yes, the wall. Posters, and- everything. Yeah, I did the same thing. <laughs> And so we we abandoned that for the backyard and the dining room Come and everything. On, and then seven years later, when we decided to adopt three more, I said, I hate what we're doing. And I cannot imagine having to do this with six kids. And so we just stopped mm-hmm. and we wanted to bond as a family of eight now going from a you know family of five to a family and of eight. And your kids are all adopted. So you've yes. got two you've sibling got, groups like, of three. Wow. So you've got like relational work to do. You, you know, you're looking beyond just the education piece and going, we, Absolutely. we have to like form a family that's whole and healthy. Yep. We went from zero to three to six kids. <laughs> yeah. And I so that's tired. why we- <laughs> I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, uh, the younger, the younger th- or the older three were three, two and three months. And the, when seven years later, we adopted a six, five and three year old. Oh my word. And okay. so when the younger three came home, I had six kids under nine and Girl. what we were doing, which was basically read a story, fill out a workbook, lather, rinse, repeat. And it was the most boring. It's so boring. Thing ever. Yeah, there's no life in it. <laughs> Yeah. No. Right. And I didn't realize how vast the homeschool, you know, world was. And actually I met you my first year of homeschooling in 2000 or technically homeschooling before that we were learning at home, but 2009 at a um, inch conference in Michigan. Oh my word. And I got I your book. I love those guys. <laughs> in winter. I love those guys. Yeah. Yes. Dude, Michigan, so are was- you still in Michigan? Yes. They are, they're trying to like, girl, you guys got some challenges to homeschooling right now. I know. Like legislation. we never have. We never have in the past. It's been, it's been almost like Texas. Golly, people need to pay attention. Like I keep saying, y'all think that your freedom, that your homeschool freedom is just, it's just there and you're not paying attention. And these guys are trying to take it from you for real. Right. Yep. We have one year with my last, but I'm really concerned about present and future homeschoolers. Yeah, yeah, as you should be. Yeah. (laughs) And so we, you know, we stopped what we were doing. I had been looking at some unschooling type things online and I was like, these people are out of their mind. They're crazy. (laughs) There's no way. (laughs) What is wrong with these parents? No structure. How irresponsible, you know, so crazy. And, um, you know, they came home in March of 2013, the younger three. And we were just like, we're done to the fall. We need to bond as a family. Yep, yep. We have other more important things to, to consider right now. Yeah. And, and so, that's your job uh, as a mother. I love that you're sensitive to that because your job is to go, mm-hmm. oh, hey, we got bigger fish to fry right now. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And so um, that's what we did. My husband was in full agreement with that. And I start watching, you know, videos and reading blogs on unschooling and everything. And I'm like, oh, that sounds so free. That sounds so wonderful. But it was terrifying to even consider. It was terrifying to consider. Like a free fall. Yes, ex- absolutely. Yeah, Especially yeah. because I'm, you know, what they would call a triple A personality. And so I'm thinking, you know, I'm like crossing T's and dotting I's and I want facts and I want numbers and Me I want, too, you girl. know. Yeah. And so yeah. to do that, you know, there was a lot of growth for me, a lot of letting go. Um, But by the time the fall came, we had started to see some things. My husband at the time worked in the school district. And so he was able to see a vast difference between how our kids were learning and how the how the school system was going at the time. And he was like, we need to keep we need to not go back to what we were doing Mm -hmm. because our kids started teaching themselves things and teaching each other things that we would have never initiated. And then they were learning the very basics through living and through play and Mm -hmm. through exploration. And I started to see some of the things that other people were talking about um, in these blogs and in these videos. And I was like, that's what they're talking about. That's natural learning that Mm -hmm. it's really happening. Um, And so we never looked back. Right. And we never looked back. And that's, it's been a decade. 
since we made that decision. Um, some of my kids have been more schooly and more traditional than others. But the key for us was, and this is the kicker, because especially being a Christian and um, wanting to make sure that I'm doing what's right with my right. kids, you know, morally, value-wise, all of it. So yeah. all those things came into play. And I saw a lot of people online talking about, you know, unschooling can't possibly line up, you know, with, with, with your faith and that kind of thing. And I'm thinking, that's not what I'm seeing. Right. And, and I started saying, I was like, how can following who God created my child to be be outside of God's will? How can that not be? You know, and and people do this with traditional homeschooling as well. So I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. But the way that we were approaching it was really following their natural bent, God-given talents and interests and things that made them uniquely them, you know, by the hand of God. I love it because you (laughs) are saying that your kids come to you exactly how God says they did, right? Absolutely. That he created them in their mother's womb with unique skills and gifts and abilities and the responsibility and the opportunity of every Mm -hmm. parent is to sort of mine out of your child. What is the gift and ability that God's given? It was already there. It was already there. You're just trying to help them find it. Exactly. I love it. I and love that's it. how we've approached it for the last decade. And it has brought so many amazing things forth that I would have never found in a curriculum. I would have never found, not that there's anything wrong with curriculum. Let me state that for the record. Right, right. Um, because we have Everyone, used, everyone you know, can put your, your knives back now. It's fine. We're right. fine. <laughs> right. It's okay. It's okay. Right. Yeah. So, the, you know, there's just so much to be said about letting our kids be who they are through the eyes of God. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to say that today. Yes, but you do. Yes, <laughs> you have to say because, that today. Because we all know what a woman is. Okay. Yes, exactly. We do. Yeah. We ex- yeah, we know exactly what a woman is. We do. And so um, it, it's just, it's been a beautiful ride. It's been a beautiful ride. Um, they have all been able to spend years honing in on what makes them a gift to the world. Mm. They've all been able to, you know, see what their gifts and talents are and spend time on those things. And it doesn't mean that we did not um, make sure they had the basics. You know right. what I'm saying? We're, we're not uh, being irresponsible and in, in realizing that There are going to be things that no matter what they pursue in their future as a career or their life's work, that there's going to be things that they need to know. And so, you know, all those things are covered. They're just in a very untraditional manner. Mm -hmm. Many times in conversation, many times related to what's going on in life at the time. Mm -hmm. So if we're studying government, we're studying elections. We're studying morals and values and biblical principles and how it relates to those that want to represent us. Come on. Right. Girl, so, <laughs> you should be like America's homeschool mom. <laughs> no, that's you true. Can, you can be like co- coach the, co- coaching the moms who are coaching the kids, who are picking right. the next generation of leaders. It's really, really true. Well, can you give you us know, can you give us a typical day? So, so there are parents who are listening to this right now. I mean, this mm-hmm. this show is going to be listened to you know thousands and thousands of times. Yes. Talk us through, because there's some, there are moms and dads who are listening to this and maybe even a high schooler who's like, oh, that's interesting. But their right. heads are kind of exploding because the idea is so foreign to maybe a kid who grew up like I did in a traditional school or maybe, mm-hmm. um, you know, the kids who've always done just the workbooks, right? Get out your workbook and there's seven subjects in every day and every day has a workbook page and that's what you do. But like you rightly pointed out, that can, that can shrivel up a soul. Uh, yes. Not in everybody. There are some kids who thrive with that. And so I, I don't want right. to, uh, I mean, I've had, of all seven of our kids, some of them did great with workbooks and some of them didn't. But t- walk us through a typical unschooling day. Yeah. So what's interesting is that a lot of people think that unschooling, first of all, let me say the un is what freaks people out. It is. And that's what freaked yes. my husband out in the beginning. He was yeah. like, un anything sounds unnatural. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Right. He's Ready. like, I just don't like the word. Right. Unshowering. So, you know, no. Right. <laughs> you will never be unshowering. Yeah. No, I hear you. One of the things that, um, 
you know, sometimes I call it interest led learning, you know, but delight more directed, than, you know, right. It, delight directed, self directed, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. And even mm-hmm. using the word self sometimes it's kind of off putting, especially right. as a Christian. But yeah. um, one of the things that we did, we didn't necessarily have structure. And a lot of people say, well, I school, I, my kids need structure or I need structure. It's not that it's void of structure. It's a different kind. And it's the st- structure is created by the learner, who was the most important, you know, I, the and it's for the learner. Course, but I mean, ultimately, exactly. I think that's, why are we doing this? Why are we doing it? <laughs> you're not actually doing it for you, mom. I mean, you're doing it for, your, right. for the learner. Yeah. Right. Yes. And so the structure is created by the learner and um, that's what makes it work. Um, A lot of times we have kickback and anger and irritation from our kids because they have zero autonomy or zero um, opinion or thoughts or ability to to into what they're learning. create their day, into what they're learning, into what they love. It's almost like I'm exhausted by the time I do seven workbooks. I don't even want to play the piano. I don't want, right. I want to go play. I don't want to learn anything else, even if it means that it's, you know, mastering a skill that I love. Yeah. So it's good. Uh, saying all that to say, our days were not uh, scheduled by times and minutes and, and things like that. It was more of a routine. Um, and the routines have changed over the years and have remained flexible because our lives have changed and the kids needs have changed and the things that they've, you know, delve into change. But, you know, in the morning we have a routine. We still kind of have the same routine. Um, in the evening we kind of have the same routine. Um, but it's the magical middle part of the day that they get to direct and, um, All of that is directed, I guess I could back up a little bit, by their annual goals. We go from January to December. They set goals for themselves for that year. And those goals can be financial goals. They can be, you know, I want to become a better writer. Um, I want to learn graphic design or um, whatever their goals are. And they can be from A to Z. And they don't have to be important to me, but they're important to them. And then uh, dad and I determine, you know, what areas in which they could improve because maybe those skills like reading, writing and living math are things that they're all going to need. Yes. And so we will add those to the goal list. And then but they themselves will determine how they'll go about learning those things. So if, if so I what, want what to would that look like. Yeah. So you're so you just added math to your sixth grader and he was like. Mm-hmm. Okay, mom added this to me. But I, so when you say he goes about trying to figure out how he's going to learn that, what would that look like? Mm-hmm. Well, my husband and I did a under the age of 12, we let math naturally evolve. Um, after that, after that point, we looked at all the math that we use in our lives. We wrote down a list of all of those skills and we said, how can we integrate that into their lives? So we made sure everybody had a bank account. We made sure that we had them making their own purchases and keeping their own ledgers for their accounts. Mm -hmm. Um, We made sure that they, you know, we would go to the store and just ask them, okay, if if this is 20 percent off, then what is the actual you know, what is the actual cost of this? Then you have to add tax. So they're doing percentages and multiplication and the four operations. And, um, you know, in the kitchen, obviously, we're, I don't think I have a kid that learned fractions outside of the kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's just one of those things, adding, subtracting, you know, uh, doubling and all that kind of thing. But So we figured out how to add those things to our lives through gardening, through household chores, through their interests. Um, One of my sons, who is uh, proudly serving his nation in Japan right now, Mm -hmm. um, is a pilot. And so a lot of what he had to learn um, uh, in mapping and uh, actually he started flying at 12. And so he spent many, many years um, calculating distance and all the kinds of things that he would have to do mathematically and scientifically to be able to take a trip, to be able to fly from here to there and the wind and the, you know, all of the, the weather included and all those things. So that's just an example of how science and math come into play with their actual interests. I have another son that is a musician. 
Um, and he didn't realize until he started st- uh, studying music theory how science and math related to that. That's right. And so we we delved into that. And um, so it's just so many different things that they do. But to answer your original question about what our days look like, the middle of the day is filled with them um, pursuing and going after the goals they've set at the beginning of the year. Now, does that mean every day is a thousand percent productive and they're just, you know, solving cancer and all kinds That's of right. things all day? No, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, you know, we get on each other's nerves just like any other family. Yeah. You yeah. know, there are there are lazy days and there are productive days and then there's everything in between. And so there are. Um, it's just one of those things where the middle of the day is a free flow, but they have these goals that they've set for themselves as a map, mm-hmm. a marker of what they what they want to attain. And so really, for you've given some them of them, a framework. I feel like yes, that's what I hear from you. I feel like you've. I think when people hear unschooling, and I mean, I would put myself mm-hmm. in this category too. I don't feel this way about it anymore. But when I first heard about it, I was like, okay. So now I see. I, I'm picturing Tarzan. Right. Right. And his mom and dad. Oh, we have just, our Tarzan moments too. Yeah. And his mom and his mom and dad are just like, there's the door, son. Have a good day at school. You know, and he's off like, you know, but you've really given them, you know, you've given them a little bit of Tarzan, but also you're giving them a framework, a structure in which they can uh, fit their day around. And you're giving them mm-hmm. the opportunity to shoot for goals, right? So mm-hmm. you're asking them, and I think, man, I wish more parents would do that. You know, talk to your kids. What do you want to do? I have a 12 year old uh, or 13 year old now who wants to be a pilot. And ah. she is, I mean, at, at the age of 13, she is very committed to this idea. She wants to be a pilot. That's and amazing. so we're giving her opportunities to do that, but you're never going to know if you don't ask your kids and sort of, you know, let them see what do they like to do? What is their, what's their natural bent? Right. Absolutely. And with him, by the time he graduated, well, I, I like to use the word launched, <laughs> um, yep. but by the, by the time he graduated, he, uh, he had his pilot's license, his student pilot's license. He had two certifications in avionics and aviation maintenance and um, decided to hold off on college and went to uh, to work for a company designing computers and installing computers in private jets. And he was 18 years old. And that's because he had spent literally seven, eight years focused in and honing a craft and gaining knowledge in an area that he would have never gotten. Yeah. Um, Any other way, really. Not, he wouldn't have gotten that. And so, yeah. you know, it's just, and, and now he's doing what he loves, you know, and mm-hmm. all his, his second love is his country. And so he loves mm-hmm. um, being Good job, mom. And, I, <laughs> and so, Good job. Um, and I have two more, that, well, one definitely that, is about to be 18 and wants to join the Marines. But um, wow. the uh, all of them are so vastly different in their skills yeah, and knowledge and yeah. giftings. And it has been a joy to see it come out, but it's been a joy to help cultivate it. And then, you know, I have a couple that have gone, you know, from one extreme to the other when it comes to the things they're interested in. And I feel like, parents need to hear this you there is no amount of money and hear me we're not rich but there's no amount of money or time or effort spent on something that's going to be wasted even if you don't see it um applying to their long-term life's work it's they're it's going somewhere it's all building upon something so you may have a kid that's that's playing the piano for 10 years and suddenly they don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like that was wasted time and effort and money. All of those skills outside of music, all of the skills gained during that experience are going to build upon something and go lead to something else. So yeah, don't feel like, you know, there's this misconception that if, you know, with unschooling that you are, um, you know, hurry up and find out what your kid's calling is and then spend all of these years, you know, focusing on that. Mm -hmm. 
you're going to have some kids that know that they know and show a skill and aptitude for something very young. And you're going to have 18 year olds that are like, I don't know what I want to do. Right. <laughs> and the, both are normal. Yes, both are normal. And your goal good. is to just encourage them as they go. Today, it may be p- piano. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, it may be aviation. The next day, it may be graphic arts. But all of it is building. All of those skills are, are leading to something. And you'll see eventually how they all play out. Um, so just don't be afraid to be flexible and don't get frustrated when your kid wants to change things up. Mm-hmm. You know, ask questions. Sometimes it may be discouragement. It may be fear. But a lot of times they just feel like they're done with that in the moment. They may well, come you back want to, to change it. things up, right? I mean, I think exactly. it's easy for us as parents to sort of forget that our our kids are just really little people. I mean, they just, right. you know, they need that variation. They need to be to be challenged. As you look back over your uh, your experience as a homeschooling, because you've been at this for a while, if you mm-hmm. could go back to your younger self, someone asked me this on a show the other day. I thought that's a good question. I'm going to start throwing that at people on my on my podcast. What would you do differently? If you could talk to your younger self, what would you say to her that you kind of As a wished? homeschool mom? Yeah, as a homeschool mom, okay. as just a mother in general. But yeah. when you look back, would you go, man, I, I would have done this different. I would have looked at this differently. One thing, honestly, if I had known about it, I would have been more loose and less structured in the beginning. I hear that. I would have all I would have time. leaned more yeah. toward unschooling or interest led learning mm-hmm. than I would have um because I feel like we wasted four years. Mm-hmm. I feel like I there was very the little retention. There yeah, was just lather, yeah. rinse, repeat, read and answer questions. And the next day they had no idea. I wrote, you know, there was I no don't retention. even remember what they're learning. Yeah. That's what Ginny Yurich exactly. would say to you. I think um, she, she does, of course, a thousand hours outside and I had her on, mm-hmm. I don't know, a week or two ago. And she was saying the same thing. And I would say mm-hmm. the same thing. If I could go back, you know, to, to my, you know, 20, 25 year old self, you know, 26 year old self who was just starting out homeschooling. I would, my, I would just sat me down and said, settle down. (laughs) Yes. Calm down. Relax. Chill out. Enjoy. Calm down. Relax. Enjoy. Get outside. And (laughs) yeah. And it's hard, right? Because you want to do, I mean, the the motivation behind the sort of uptight homeschool mom is I want to do this right. So the motivation is good, but sometimes Mm -hmm. the outcome is that everyone's just stressed out and the homeschool mom is burned out and the kid's not loving learning. And that's so much of what we want to do, right? Is help them love to learn. And you can't do that when you're just cramming workbooks down their throat. You know what I think with, with new homeschool moms as well is that I noticed because I was this way and I see it in a lot of other people is that because we have so much pushback from those friends and family surrounding us, that our goal is to prove them wrong. Yeah. And so we want our kid yeah. academically to shine, you know, a thousand times over someone that's in a public school yeah. to say, yeah. see, this works. Yeah. So we spend so much time doing that instead of really enjoying our kids and figuring out who they are and what they have to offer the world. We're trying to get them to fit into a box and be better at the box checking yeah. <laughs> than, so than being it's who so, they are. Yeah. So It's so true. And I, I just wonder, you know, what would happen if we had more confidence? And mm-hmm. I think that's a lot of what you're doing when you talk about just unschool, because your kids are doing great. I mean, you're, you know, most of your kids are grown now and they're just doing great. And I, I, I wish that moms that go into it, particularly now, you know, because mm-hmm. my generation, you know, so often I felt like I was really running to something. This generation of homeschooling moms largely running from something. They need to know mm-hmm. that God's already gifted you. He's already equipped you. If he's called you, he's already equipped you and mm-hmm. you can do it and you, and you can do it without stifling your child's love for learning. Absolutely. You know, and it's um, unschooling has looked different. That's the beauty of it. I think people think that it's just throw out the curriculum and, you know, take hands off. It's I've never been more hands on than when I was unschooling my kids because I had to be I had to be tuned in Mm -hmm. to who they are and Mm -hmm. what they had to offer and those gifts and talents. And if you're not paying attention, things get past you. They fly under the radar. And before you know it, you're like, 
I didn't even know that that was a talent of yours. Mm. An example of that is my oldest daughter. We were just, you know, everybody was going to be a math genius in our family (laughs) Um, because I had the insecurity that I wasn't and my husband is Mm -hmm. um, that I wanted everybody, you know, to master what mom failed so miserably at and uh, not even realizing that she had a um, she had dyscalculia. Number Mm. one, and we didn't find that out for years. We just thought she just didn't like it. She just hated math like me. Um, And I projected that, you know, with with uh, a couple of my kids. And that was I would definitely change that, change my attitude and how I approach certain things, Um, not realizing that I'm projecting that upon them. Yep. Boy, we do it. We don't even realize it. So, And she uh, she actually. When, when we stopped doing things traditionally and started unschooling, she started writing. And one day she sent, I write, I talk about this in uh, my book, but she started writing and she brought me a notebook and she said, oh, I wrote a story, mom, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's cute. So when I got around <laughs> to actually reading oh, that's it, cute. I told my husband, right? <laughs> I told my <laughs> husband, I was like, this is a book. I said, what if we made her homeschooling experience surrounding a book? And she said, yes, mom, I want to write, you know, at that time she had um, a goal to write 12 books in 12 different countries uh, about, you know, the characters. There were fictional books for ages 8 to 13. And she, by the time she graduated, she had written four and published four. And she published before I did. I helped her publish her books before I even published under my own name. Um, And so, but we would have never, we would have never been able to see that gift because we would have been so focused on trying to get her to be what we wanted her to be as far as what her natural gifts and talents were. Um, And so, yes, we made sure that she had very basic, you know, math skills, but again, dealing with her special uh, challenges in that area, we had to figure out what she was going to need for what God called her to do um, and make sure that she had the opportunity to exercise those gifts and talents first and foremost. And so, yes, she became a published author of four books before the age of 16. And (sighs) what she learned through that, this is the kicker. She learned public speaking because mm-hmm. she had to represent her brand in her in her books. She learned uh, uh, business, you know, so there was math involved in that. She learned marketing. She learned about every single country, different languages of those countries. She learned about um, customs and cultures because each one involved a different culture. Um, so there were just so many things that she was learning in this one interest of hers, which was writing. Wow. Um, And then her, you know, she also was very passionate about cooking. So she went to culinary arts school. So she's a trained chef as well. That's Um, handy at Thanksgiving. And right. And now she's a new mom. And so it's like, we were able to see who she was and what her gifts were instead of forcing her to do something, number one, that was a challenge we didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And number two, that she, it just wasn't her natural talent. Mm -hmm. You know, I have other kids, my, my kid that's 15 right now is challenging himself to do algebra and geometry. We're not forcing him to do that. It's what he wants. His older brother did the same thing. Um, And I have a musician that spends his you know, the middle of his day, writing music. He's writing music. He's composing music for piano and for guitar. And he's about to do his uh, actual um, audition for music school. So every single one of them have been able to spend that middle part of their day honing their craft and learning new things. And um, we did read alouds. And so a lot of our, uh, I'm a read aloud fanatic uh, and I miss it so me too. Me much. Too, girl. I yeah. cry just thinking about it Yeah, because to have all my babies in one room at one yeah. time and learning yeah. and it's discussing special. such amazing things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what was your favorite read aloud? Do you have one that you can think of? 
Oh, there are so many. Um, the Boy That Harnessed the Wind was mm-hmm. one of them. Um, and that was that was special because I was going to Malawi. So for us to be reading that book together and then me actually uh, visiting Malawi was pretty special. Oh, there's so many. Um, there's Chester and Gus, which was a book um, about a uh, autistic boy and his dog that was really special and uh this what is it called the sound of silence Mm. was about a um a boy during world one world war ii who was hearing but he was the child of two hearing impaired parents okay and so it, it walked through his life and and his um just it was it was just really rich really rich but we've so read a, from i mean i think people don't realize the, the power of read alouds with your kids i mean we did that yes. in the mornings for years and years mm-hmm. uh and we loved it went through missionary stories with our kids and tons of biographies yes. you know i i think of just red sails to capri and i would like to sort of stop right when they were like leaning in like Oop, guess mm-hmm. we'll have to pick that out tomorrow you know and some yeah. days we would we would <laughs> stop and it would give them this this just, you know, push to come back the next day. And then other days we'll go, you know what? We got time. Let's just finish the book today. Mm-hmm. And it, and it, they're, they're in, in that, like your growing relationship with your, with your kids. We've got about one minute left. I want to, uh, oh, no. to touch on this, uh, <laughs> really quickly. Cause then we'll come, we'll come back for happy hour. Cause I want to talk to you about unschooling, uh, young adults because you, okay. you've written a book on this called teens unleashed, uh, unschooling young mm-hmm. adults as they reach for their dreams. Yes. So good because there's a lot of people listening to this right now who are like, I just know. I mean, maybe the unschooling thing works for you, Carla. When your kids are younger, but then when they get into high school, you got to just, whoo, you got to dial it in. And your experience has been different. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's really encouraged. If people want to find you, where do they find you online? Um, I am under Simply Carla Marie on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and formerly known as... Um, Carla, the unschooling mama or Carla in the sensational six. And so I'm the same person, just evolving. <laughs> um, just evol- well, but- you're coming in, like we talked about this before, you're coming into a new season of your life. And yes. I think you're setting an example. You know, I told you before we started recording today that I, when I started mm-hmm. out, I was, you know, the busy homeschool mom. And then I took homeschool out of my name because I, I didn't want that to be like a thing that kept people from you know, sort of listening to what the Lord's putting on my heart and everyone just freaked out. They just lost their minds. Like Heidi took the word homeschool out of the busy, the busy mom and yes. girl, you got to change, you know, your, your seasons change, mm-hmm. your message changes, right? So Absolutely. what might be your message this year? I mean, I have a different message as a mother of a 32 year old than I did as a mother of a 22 year old. Like my, my, right. my life is changing and we're growing mm-hmm. and I'm moving from season to season. So I'm excited for what, what God's doing in your life. You know, thank you. And um, if they want to know more about me, because there's so much more <laughs> that I do um, in my international work as well, they can uh, see that on my website at CarlaMarieWilliams.com. That's Carla with a K. And um, CarlaMarieWilliams.com. I'm there now, girl. You got that. Your website's yes. packed full of stuff. <laughs> thank you. And the two books that I've written on um, on interest led learning or unschooling is Homeschool Gone Wild, and that covers mindset shift in how you approach education, as well as our early homeschooling experiences and what made us switch to unschooling. And then um, Teens Unleash, because I promised to come back when I had teenagers and I had actually graduated someone to actually <laughs> write the, the sequel to that. So Teens Unleash followed that. But um, I think that's really yes, important. Been- There's nothing more demoralizing than taking parenting advice from someone whose oldest kid is five. It's like, you know, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. Well, right. Carla Marie Williams, yeah. it's just been a delight to have you here. We'll continue this conversation in, in happy hour talking about Teens Unleashed. But I just want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been a great, great experience for me and encouragement. Thank you so much for having me. If you guys want more information on my guest today, check it out at Heidi St. John forward slash podcast and I will link back to 
all things Carla Marie Williams today. I hope you guys are encouraged just listening to other homeschool moms just like you. She's a mom just like you, just like me, that God has given her the tools and ability to do the thing that he's asked her to do for her kids. And he does the same for each one of us as we follow him. So I hope you guys have been encouraged. I know some of you are like scratching your heads going, man, I didn't really, I didn't realize I could do something beyond workbooks. Yes, you can. And Carla can help. <laughs> Check it out. Carla Marie Williams. Dot com. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you are subscribed to the Heidi St. John podcast, stick around because Carla is going to be coming back on the show with me. And we're going to be talking about how we can unschool our young adults as they reach for their dreams. You guys can do this all the way through high school. I know uh, this has been part of what we have incorporated with our young adults as they move into the later teen years. Don't give up on homeschooling teens. It's the best thing ever. Yes. Do not put them back in school for goodness sake. <laughs> And uh, (laughs) Carl and I are going to talk about that in happy hour. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I will see you right back here again at the intersection of faith 